There are two types of people in this world. You either love Campari or you hate it. But what if you or your guest decided to not drink alcohol for whatever reason? You probably think you can't enjoy the beautifully bitter sweet taste of a Boulevardier, Americano or a simple Campari soda, right? Wrong! Today I'll show you how to make a completely non-alcoholic Campari substitute that will quench your thirst for the famous Italian bitter while you're going zero proof. Just combine it with soda and a few drops of saline solution for a refreshing zero Campari soda and enjoy. A cocktail before the intro. Why not? It's zero proof. You can enjoy it anytime you want. Later on, you will also make a zero Boulevardier and if you'd like to see a zero Negroni, you will need to make a non-alcoholic gin. So let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. Now I'll finish this and we can start the episode for real. It's zero cocktail time. Last year in January, we did our first Zero Proof episode, finding inspiration in this book, Zero, a new approach to non-alcoholic drinks. I really like their Campari-inspired recipe, but just wanted to add a bit more bitterness than what I got when doing the testing. As always, I'll link the book in the description, but I've already shown my versions of a few Zero ABV ingredients in the last year, starting with a non-alcoholic aromatic and orange bitters, following with Zero Bourbon, for a Zero Old Fashioned, and even Zero Vermouth for a zero Manhattan. So now that we'll go over how to make the zero Campari, we'll have everything to make a zero Boulevardier. And before we finish the episode, I'll also give you an idea on how to boost the Campari flavor, so stay tuned. For this one you'll need grapefruits and oranges for the peels, sugar, water, spices, cinnamon, pink and black peppercorns, star anise and cloves, bittering agents, gentian and angelica roots, sweet syrup from maraschino cherries, pectinex to make everything clear, and two optional ingredients, glycerol and red food coloring, but they really make a difference. First, let's make the Oleo Sacrum with grapefruit and orange peels. As mentioned in the previous episode, use organic citrus fruits and wash them well before peeling. We need 60 grams of peels from oranges and the same for grapefruits. To just make Oleo Sacrum, you'd add equal weight of sugar, so 120 grams, but we'll need additional 140 grams of sugar for the liqueur, so you can just go in with all of that right now. Mix it with the pills and gently muddle everything together. Let it sit for 24 hours before you continue with the process. Next day, we let all ingredients into a sous vide bag, starting with our still quite sugary oleo sacrum. Rinse it out to get all the sugar. Next up, 60 grams of glycerol or glycerin. It's optional, but it's a great substitute to alcohol for extracting certain flavors. Once I try to filter that out as well, I'm adding the rest of the water, 800 grams in total. Follow that with 30 grams of the syrup from a glass of maraschino cherries to add fruity sweetness and some color. For the bittering occasions, we are adding 15 grams of gentian root and 6 grams of angelica root. Now for the spices. First add 1.2 gram of cloves. Then grab a mortar and a pestle. Throw in and crush 8 grams of saline cinnamon, 6 grams of pink peppercorns, 0.7 gram of black peppercorns, and 5 grams of star anise. A bigger surface area will give us more flavor, while everything will be slowly cooking in the back. So add the spices, then try to vacuum seal the bag, with a double seal as always. Place the bag in a sous vide bath, set to 90 degrees Celsius or 195 degrees Fahrenheit, and cook for 1 hour, a little higher temperature, since we're not using alcohol and this will help with extraction of flavors. Give it a shake after the half hour mark and back in the bath it goes. After cooking, place the bag in cold water and wait for it to cool. Cut open the bag and strain the mixture through a fine strainer. This yielded 900 ml of non-alcoholic Campari. And to make it clearer, I'll add 1.8 grams of pectinex, a specialty enzyme that breaks down pectin structure. Once mixed in, we leave this to work overnight, so let's transfer to a bottle first. I'm using two smaller bottles, because I currently don't have any larger bottles free. That's totally ok, because this way it will also clarify faster when we strain it into two batches later. Like mentioned, leave this to sit and work its magic overnight. The next day, you'll see sediments at the bottom. That means it's time to gently strain our zero ABV liqueur, this time through a coffee filter. In my case, one for each bottle. Give it plenty of time, and once it's done, we're down to the final step, which is optional as well, but crucial to get the appearance right. To add a bright red color, I'll add red fruit safe coloring to a small amount of the liqueur. Once fully dissolved, I'll gradually add it to the rest of the zero Campari, until I'm happy with the color. Try to get it as close as possible to the original. Once satisfied with the result, transfer to a bottle. I'll split this into smaller bottles later, so that I can place them in the freezer and use it when needed. For now, 
Let's add the label and place it proudly next to its famous big brother. Then let's give it a quick taste. Bitter citrus notes on the nose and a bittersweet taste with hints of berries and spices. And while it's of course lacking that alcohol kick, it has a drying bitterness that lingers on the aftertaste, remarkably similar to Campari. I'm calling it a success. As with most zero ABV alternatives, this is not something that will fool you into thinking is the original Campari, but together with other components in the drink, it can create fun, non-alcoholic cocktail creations for you and your guests to enjoy. Like if you'd like to make a zero proof boulevardier. A zero boulevardier? Let's make it now. We're not using a mixing glass, but a chilled tumbler glass with a tempered ice block. We let ingredients directly in here, but since there's no alcohol, the dilution will be smaller, which is why I'll add higher amounts of all ingredients, starting with 2 ounces or 60 ml of zero proof bourbon. Follow with the smaller amounts of the next two ingredients. First, 1.5 ounce or 45 ml of zero sweet vermouth. Again, all recipes are available in a playlist on my channel or as blog posts on kevincos.com. Now we add the same amount, 1.5 ounce or 45 ml of the star of the day. Zero Campari. But even when we skip alcohol, we don't want to skip flavor, so add 2 drops of saline solution. Now give it a stir to mix and chill our non-alcoholic boulevardier. Express essential oils from a small coin of orange peel and place it on the ice. Looks as good as the original, but let's give it a taste. Zesty orange and smoked wood aroma leads into a gently subtle mix of fruity, woody and bitter notes that all hint towards its alcoholic counterpart. If you're going dry, this will be as good as it gets. Ok, now that we've reached the bottom of the glass, I'll throw out an idea on how to boost and improve the taste of our Zero Campari. It's actually using something we've made on the channel before, Campari dust. When we dehydrated Campari to sprinkle it on the fluffy jungle bird, we actually got rid of all the alcohol, together with the liquid, so you can add that into your Zero Proof Campari, to add some of the original taste, or just sprinkle some on top of your cocktail for the garnish. I wouldn't mind that jungle bird right now, but I'd love to hear what zero proof cocktails you'd use this non Campari in. And don't forget to add the red heart emoji in the comments if you made it all the way to the end. I'll see you next time with something a little stronger. Cheers!